Hey, what's up guys? Darkwing Dead bringing you another video here that is hopefully fun and informative to you. So today we're going to be covering uh, servo motors and basically what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you guys how to uh, hardwire them to a freeway switch. Um, it's something a little bit different uh, than what most other people are doing. Um, a lot of videos that I've seen, people are wiring these to Arduino boards. You have to code them. And uh, it's a little bit more, I think that's a little bit more complex for people starting off. This is a little bit more simpler. Uh, this is going to be video part one of two. Uh, basically, in this video, what I'm going to do is just explain servo motors a little bit, um, explain the voltage that they need. Um, we're going to be dissecting the motor, showing you how to actually hardwire it right off of the motor versus having to go through code and do all this other stuff. Uh, it's going to be wired to uh, a single uh, three-way switch. Um, if you were to try to do it another way, you would need multiple switches because we have to reverse polarity. I'll cover all that in the video, but um, basically this is a nice way to where if you want to add um, certain moving mechanisms uh, on your prints or on your robotics or anything that you're doing, um, it's just a very simple video that it explains how you can do it, I guess, more of an old school fashion, just hardwiring, you know, power source to the switch to the motor. Uh, very simple, very easy. So uh, we're going to get everything set up here um, and uh, I want you to sit back, relax, and show you how to uh, wire up some servo motors for your prints, your helmets, or whatever you're using them for. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Thanks. Uh, what we're using here today is a, let me get this white down here. For some reason, these uh, little servo motors come all greased up. All right, so I wiped it up. So basically what we're using is a micro server. Uh, these are great uh, for helmets and if you're in tight knit spots where you can't really um, put a big servo in. Um, the only downside to them is because they carry less load, they're not as strong, the gears aren't as, as, as heavy duty. Uh, they do require a little bit more voltage if you're opening um, certain things. Um, they still do operate off of um, as low as 5 volts, um, but I know on some of these, some of the helmets that I've done, um, they need a little bit of extra oomph, so I've actually had to go to a 12 volt and uh, kind of drop it down to a 9 volt, do like a voltage divide network, and I can do a video on that, but it's probably the only downside to these is um, they're a little bit weak, I guess you could say, so sometimes they need a little bit of extra oomph, electric, and a little extra ju juice to open up some certain things. Uh, but this is an SG90 uh, micro uh, servo, and you can get these off Amazon. I think they were $9.99 for six of them, or five of them, or something, I don't know, I just bought a bunch, so. Uh, but the first thing we want to do is they come with your typical... Uh, cable here that's got power ground and signal we're not gonna use it off the board so we're gonna basically take it apart here there are two small screws that are pretty long and you have to take those off put those off and then you're gonna have to kind of peel off the label that says SG90 because we have to get to the motor. And it's actually holding a little panel on. If you pull on this part, you're gonna pop off the top of it where the gears are. That's not what we wanna gain access to. We wanna gain access to the motor. And then just try to get a fingernail or something, a screwdriver in there. Okay. So this is the board. We don't need that. If you were programming it to uh, an Ar I don't know why I'm holding it up here. If you, this is the board. Uh, if you were programming it to an Arduino, you'd want to pin this to it and, and code it and everything. That is that is not what we're doing. Uh, what we want here is the motor. Now, if you're doing something like a mechanical faceplate or something like that, you're going to want to wire these in the same uh, the same polarity. This reverses polarity. This is what basically moves the servo, you know, left to right, clockwise and counterclockwise. So in reality, it doesn't matter what side you put 
positive and negative to, but you, when you are wiring these up, you want to make sure, like if you're doing positive on the left, you want to do it to the same motor on this, or they'll be going counterclockwise, which it's not the end of the world. You would just have to kind of fidget with mounting it, but if you've printed mounts that go in a certain spot and then you wire it backwards, you're going to get into having to move the servo around, which could affect the way the hinge sits, and you could just really kind of end up digging yourself in a hole and creating more work than you need to. So I always recommend just whatever side you're wiring the positive to, wire it to the same um, on both servos and then the same for the negative. Um, but essentially this is what we're looking for right here. So this is the, the this is the, uh, the the poles, the positive and the negative inputs of the motor right here. Now if you want, you can completely dissect this board and, and take it out, but you don't really need to. Um, but we are going to use this wire harness here. Uh, so what you wanna do, is basically just cut these off and then just kind of take the wires and just tuck them in here because you're not going to need these obviously at all. So just take your screwdriver, just kind of shove them in there out of the way. And basically just look like that. And then what you want to do is basically uh, solder some leads on there. So what I'm actually going to do is take the brown, dropping my screwdriver, is take the brown and the red off of this and use this for essentially my, my positive and my negative. You will need some uh, wire strippers here, some wire cutters. Twist these around. I don't know if you can see, I guess you can kind of see my soldering iron in the back here. Um, basically what we want to do is just solder some leads on. So, try to get my solder out here. My hands are all greasy from. So really all you want to do is, like I said, just kind of get a little bit of solder on your wire here and just kind of line it up. Okay, so basically just kind of soldered the leads on there. And what you're gonna do is just basically put that cover uh, back on. So um, you just wanna make sure it clears and the uh, cover goes back on, but basically all we wanna do is just kinda pop this back on here. It'll kinda pop back on. And then it's got that little opening right there. So all the wires go through with no problem put our screws back in because we're not going to have those labels to kind of I guess guide us or hold this in place. So just going to screw those back on. Let's grab a battery pack. Yay, it works. So you we've successfully hardwired the motor so now instead of having to send code to it and do all this junk nope it's just power and ground and that polarity will flip when we um, wire it to the switch so let's wire the switch now okay so we have uh, successfully hardwired the servo motor so the next thing we want to do is the only way to wire this to one switch is by basically having a three-way switch. And basically what it has is um, it has throwing polarity one way and then basically off and then throwing polarity the other way. So it basically has three ways. And essentially what this switch does is you wire your, uh, your positive and your negative into it and you're going to cross the poles. That way the output will send the polarity to each, each direction basically. Um, the only way you can get this motor to work is by sending positive on one side of the motor and then basically flipping it, sending it to the other side. Um, if you try to do this with regular switches, it would just be a huge wiring debacle basically. Um, and essentially, like I said, you'd be having, it would just, you could do it, but it's just not, um, 
it's it's kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> so this really simplifies it for you. Like I said, you're gonna basically have your positive coming in here and your negative coming in here. Um, and each of these is gonna be its own output. It's gonna be isolated so the wires aren't gonna cross. You're not gonna be hitting positive and negative and, and burning every, anything out. Um, it's a very simple way. So um, again, these you can get on Amazon. And I'll basically show you because I already have one wired up here. I just soldered it. You can use whatever connections you want. Um, but like I said, essentially the middle poles are your output. So that is what, when you flip the switch, that is sending the positive or negative single signal out. Uh, but what we have to do is we have to charge each of these poles with that, with that signal. So here are our inputs. So basically right here, these two are going to get wired to a battery. So these basically come in. So you've got your positive here and then you've got your negative here. And then we want to jump that over okay uh, and the reason why we want to do that is we don't want we wouldn't want to go down here because then that's going to essentially cross the poles we don't want to do that so we have to jump this over to the opposite pole in order for it to throw in each direction so we go po uh, positive in here jump it over to this pole which then sends that signal to here and then that's going to be your positive and then basically the same thing with the negative that goes there boom boom so then what's nice is when you throw it one way it sends this signal when you flip it the other way it sends that signal so you're reversing the polarity of the motor um so this is the easiest basically the easiest way to do it with a switch uh normally with just a regular you know two-way switch you have something comes in you have an on and off you would need multiple switches to do that and it would just get very complicated. You'd have to make sure one switch is off before you turn the other switch on because if one switch was left on and then you were throwing negative, it's gonna you're gonna arc the, 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 the motor or the circuit basically. So with this, it's there's no way. Once you flip that, you know, boom, it's gonna send say negative signal. When you flip it this way, it is shut off. You flip it this way, now it's sending a positive signal. Like I said, it would, it would just be, you'd have so many different switches you'd have to flick back and forth to do this. Um, this is really the easiest way. Might look a little bit complicated, it's really not. You know, you got your positive coming in, you jump it to the opposite pole, boom, you got your output. Negative, opposite pole, boom, you got your output. So that's really the simplest way to, to basically do it. Now, um, for testing reasons, I'm just gonna have this, this battery pack here. So you can get these off Amazon. These basically have uh, two AAA batteries. Uh, they're ran in series, so it is going to be a three volt signal, which is fine for one servo. Um, if you're running two and you have something with weight, you are, you are gonna need a little bit more or you're gonna need some helpers and some ports, yada, yada. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna basically show you here. So going back to our switch, these are our inputs. So all we're gonna do is go back to kindergarten and line up the colors. So we've got red to red, black to black, pretty, pretty easy. Okay. And then same thing off here, we're gonna go brown to black because that's our ground. Gear piece on here. So you can kind of see. So we're gonna keep it in the off position for now. We're gonna turn the battery pack on. So now the battery pack is sending power um, to the switch and we're gonna flip it one way. You can see it turns, okay. So you can see how it's reversing it. So when we throw it one way, it's sending polarity to one direction. When we flip it the other, it goes in the opposite direction. That's what we want. That's what makes the servo work. And that's what's gonna make it open and close your faceplate or move your arm or whatever you're doing. So very simple way uh, to do this. Now, if you had the, you know, the Iron Man faceplate, it's got the arm, the, basically the 90 degree arm, yada, yada. I'll show you on uh, the helmet that I have displayed here, but this is, this is all there is to it, okay? Is you've got your battery pack, You've got your switch all wired up and you've got your servo motor hardwired. You don't need any code. You don't need to do any pinning. You don't need any extra headaches under there. You need a battery pack. You need a servo motor. You need the mounts. And then you slap it in the helmet and you can open and close it 
Um, you know, you can put the switch at the at the base of the face and just kind of reach in and, and turn it on and turn it off. That's what I'm doing with mine. So that's all there is to to wiring up the faceplate. Now, let me kind of move the camera here a little bit to, and I'll actually just move the helmet over and show you. So we've got the mo we've got these wired. We're good to go. We understand that. Okay. Now what we have to do is apply that to the helmet. Uh, doing the helmet, there's a lot of different variables. Now, I'm just kind of starting off on this one. And basically, it needs some additional hinges, um, which I, I highly recommend. Um, because if not, you're going to have to increase the voltage because all that weight is going to be on there and you're going to need a little bit of extra oomph, like I said before. So you can, in theory, run two of these servo motors with just two battery packs. Um, basically, I'm taking these battery packs and, and they make larger battery packs where you don't have to do it like this, but I have to basically wire these uh, essentially in series. So, and all you're really doing is, is basically daisy chaining them. So, um, when you wire them in series, you're essentially increasing your voltage. So, and that's what we want. So you basically just, you would take one battery pack and connect the positive to the negative and then the positive of this to the negative of this. And then you, you're using the, the positive and negative from your end leads here. On the switch here, we're gonna basically do the same thing. Um, we have our switch and we need our input. Okay, so we need we need voltage input, which we're gonna snag from the battery pack. Okay. So nothing's gonna change here. Positive's gonna go to positive, negative's gonna go to negative. Okay. So basically with these random series, we're running around nine volts. Okay, because we've got two servos in there. So like I said, they will run as low on five volts. I've read some things online that you can find some that run on three. Um, I guess that's why people use the Arduino boards because they do some of the work for you, but when you're doing it like this, it's it's not the case. Um, and then same thing, these are your outputs, your positive and your, and your negative. So you're gonna twist those together. Kind of move this here. I'll kind of slide the helmet forward so you can see it a little bit more. Now, like I said, this helmet does need additional um, uh, hinges because there's so much weight on the servo hinge um, that it needs that little extra oomph to open it. Um, there are bearings. There are different hinges that you can print that you can make to basically help do this. Uh, but essentially, this is the same thing as uh, before. So basically what we do, and this might shoot up kind of fast, so don't, don't freak out. You, there's ways to tweak this and change this. Um, so you can see it open, but you see how it kind of went off to the side. Really what, this, what these need is they need that extra hinge here, and it's more of a stabilizer. Um, so you can see that it opens and closes, but it goes really, really fast. Um, so you don't really want that. So when you actually get... Um, the extra hinge, uh, it'll actually help stabilize that uh, a little bit more, um, you know, from opening and closing it, and, and it does go a little bit fast. But what's funny is if you drop this down to six volts, it actually struggles quite a bit to open. So once you add those extra hinges, um, that's really, you know, it's going to take a lot of weight and a lot of pressure off of opening and closing that. Um, let me just do a small modification here, and then we'll look at this one more time. All right, yeah, from, I had to adjust the one hinge because uh, there's not a bearing in there and it was it's actually basically stripped the screw out so the screw tends to fall out. So um, I won't really touch on it too much on this video, but there are there's a lot of um, things that you need to get these um, face places to, you know, open and close, um, you know, properly, you know. Um, you know, if you don't get them lined up right and, and yada yada, so... That'll be in, in part two of the video. This was basically just to show you like, hey, is it possible to do it? Yes. Uh, there's a lot of different mounts and a lot of different options you can go with. I've been messing with this for like a month. Um, 
you know, so there's, there's different ways that you can do it. Um, and we will show that in part two of the video, but this was basically just wiring up the servo motor, um, showing you guys how to wire it, you know, off the switch. Um, and what's nice about this switch is, you know, when you get your helmet, um, you know, you can basically, what I plan on doing is right down here, um, just basically 3d printing a small piece, um, of, of plastic, uh, and I'll probably do it uniform so it looks even on both sides, or I might do it up here uh, and basically just flush mounting the switch, you know, basically right here. So when you want to, um, you know, open and close the faceplate, you can do it like that. Um, but that's why some people do use the, uh, the, the boards because it is a smaller switch. Uh, it's just one click to open, one click to close. And some people like that. Some people are like, no, I just, I want to do it this way. And this is, I mean, to me, this is easy. You don't have to worry about buying a board or if the board fails or pinning things and extra things being in the helmet. Um, you basically just need a couple battery packs. Um, you can also just use a straight nine volt. That works fine too. Um, I just didn't have a nine volt laying around. Um, I just use these little double A battery packs. You can make your own. You can literally take a bunch of a double A AA or triple A batteries and wire them in series and make your own battery pack. You don't need to buy these. Um, it's perfectly fine. Um, you know, just look up some some videos if you're not sure, or ask me to make one, and, and I can basically make it for you. But nice, quick, easy way. Uh, to hardwire a servo. So if you're trying to, like I said, any specific robotics or you're trying to get a faceplate to open or anything like that, um, you can absolutely do that with. Um, and hopefully that's what this video showed you. So um, if this video helped you out, guys, please let me know. Uh, you know, give me a like and subscribe. Uh, I got a lot more fun videos on the way. Uh, this is a helmet that will have the uh, working servo. I'm going to do a couple different versions. I'm also going to uh, do a uh, opening and closing faceplate that is with voice prompt. We'll be using a Raspberry Pi for that. Um, so that will be a future project. Um, it will, the eyes will be lit to a magnetic switch. So when the faceplate closes, they turn on. So this is a helmet that's going to get some pretty cool stuff. I'm also going to be incorporating some sound cards and things like that in there. So, uh, that will be some, uh, higher end, uh, tech, I guess you could call it. Um, but you know, these videos, I'm, I'm kind of trying to do these videos for levels. So people who um, are just trying to do basic, simple things and don't want to go through, like I said, getting boards or getting cards, they can just go to Radio Shack or wherever and get a switch, get a battery pack, get a servo motor, boom, and they want their faceplate to open. Nice, quick, simple, and easy, um, which is never the case in 3D printing because it starts off simple and it turns into something crazy. Um, but this is just a simple way to do it, but I will be having more uh, in-depth um, like I said, builds with, with different things and different aspects, uh, to kind of show you guys like, Hey, anything's possible if you, uh, if you keep your mind open. So, uh, hopefully this video has helped you. Like I said, really easy to wire a servo. Uh, this was the SG. I'll show you again here. I got the, can you see that? Probably not. Let me tap the phone. The SG 90 micro servo servo. Those are on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description. But, like I said, that's it for today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, please let me know. Oh, the helmet's all fuzzy now. I'm unfocused. Um, hope you guys like my mask. Like I said, this will obviously be getting uh, some more work done to it. Will look a lot cooler when it's all sanded and painted and finished. Oh, I'm tired. Um, yeah, like I said, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know. Give me a like and subscribe. Please follow the channel. If there's something you'd like to see, let me know. Uh, next video up will probably be, um, the finishing video of the Mark 85, the, uh, wet sanding, or I should say the painting, the masking, the wet sanding, the clear coat, the polishing, the LED eye install, all that fun stuff. So that'll be the next, uh, the next video up. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, that'll have a lot of tips and tricks, uh, different ones that I haven't mentioned before about, uh, finishing your uh, finishing your prints so they look like they're movie quality. Have those Rooster Brothers show up at your porch and say, "Hey man, we need you to make us some helmets." That'll never happen, but we can we can only hope, right? So again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next time. Be on the lookout for that Mark eighty five video. I don't know what's going to be after that. Um, I'm going to be actually taking a week off, uh, be on vacation, so you won't see too much from me. I'll throw a video up while I'm on vacation. I'll, my wife will be yelling at me because I'm on my phone, but got to do what we got to do. So thanks again, guys, and we'll see you next time. Take care.